What are some of the favorite shows you've played locally? We normally play like house shows. And then I remember the local art show we did for La Jara, Jala Dorada. Oh, that, that one was so cool. Like they, Summer t- Fun Fest. Yeah, Summer Fun Fest. Uh, we played for an hour and we thought it wasn't, I mean, we knew we could do it, but we didn't know like people would stand there that long for our set for, for an sure. hour, you know? Normally like people have a small, short like attention span. But it worked out, and then they paid us, too, which was cool. Like, I think it was, like, our first paid gig, too, yeah. And then um, there was another one that happened last year, which was the Paint Booth Festival. Mm. That, and, um, yeah. that took place at Essex Brewery. Yeah, so um, last uh, the Paint Booth had, a, had their one-year anniversary, and we were invited to perform along with other sick bands, uh, Shell Shocks for one. Uh, Blue Knights was there also, so um, it was pretty cool. Former too, um, pretty cool guys. Uh, really enjoyed that set. It was it was really fun. Yeah, we liked. I mean, we got a lot of homies in the in the game. You you say like Endo Soul, they're good friends. Both Bocho, Kasadin, um, yeah. former. You know, we got. A, Blue Knights, we we played with all these people a lot, and we love to play with them. Royals, we we hit them up all the time. They are such a good performer. But um, so that's basically who we play with a lot. I don't know. I'm not really sure who I'd want to play with in the you know in the near future because I don't know. I mean, the bands I like are obviously they're way too big, but. Well, actually, I would like to know, broadening from local to any band ever, who's like, who's the dream collaboration? If you could play with anyone in the world. Everyone. Everyone. You want to go? (laughs) Everyone at once. How about we each say one band? (laughs) Yeah, or two or three, please. Yeah, I want to hear from everyone. Okay, um, so first of all, uh, Tropa Magica, they were uh, first uh, called uh, The Commons. Uh, so okay. you could check out the, their music, V Commons or Tropa Magica. Uh, the singer does a side project called Churro Triste. Um, he does <laughs> Spanish covers or English covers. He turns them into more uh, rancheras, mariachi kind of acoustic versions. So um, I really fucking dig that. Uh, I would love to play with Tropa Magica. Hell yeah. Open up for them. I don't give a fuck if they pay us or not. <laughs> That'd be sick. Perfect. Um, dude, it'd be cool if, like, uh, we, we, like, played for, like, I know this is just, like, like, imaginary, but if we were to play, like, for King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, like, <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, like, a festival, you know, like, open up for them or something, like, because, you know, there's a lot of festivals, too, I don't know if you've heard of, like, Desert Days or Coachella or, like, um, yeah. or Tropic- Tropicalia, too, like, yeah. you know, it'd be cool to just be in one of those. I don't know if you guys heard of, like, any other like events like that too or yeah being in one of those would be cool Latin festival because I'm like I, I like a lot of like girls in Espanol and uh, all these what like your number one band it's because it, it's a bunch like the the, the yeah. alternative because right now I've been listening to a bunch of uh, alternative Spanish rock bands so and there's festivals like in Latin America and like with any of those like the, the new uh, Spanish you know speaking uh, alternative rock bands that, that'd be the three for me. I listen to a lot of Ty Siegel, so that'd be sick. Ty Siegel is my number one right now. Ty Siegel. I guess right now for me, I'm doing Mokhtar. Some guy from Africa. He shreds. shreds. Yeah, he shreds. <laughs> oh, yeah. He plays. It's like a um, different style of music, completely different than what anything we play. So it'd be pretty cool to just try to get that vibe going and see what that's all about. And... Last but not least, uh-huh. the homie E Arenas. Yeah. He's uh he's actually the bassist for uh, Chicano Batman. Uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of people. I know. love them. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, Super yeah. So. Project, Super sick. Yeah. So um the bassist for for them uh, is Eduardo Arenas, uh, but he has a side project called E Arenas. Uh, he's pretty cool. He has some sick uh cumbia songs. Uh, it's a little progressive. It's fucking sick. Would like to open up for them one time two times a lot of times if you could interview any artist or band who would it be what would be one thing you ask them 
Oh man, I love the gorillas, and they they're really sick because it's like Damon Arbon, and I know he works with a lot of people, but he's like the the mastermind behind it. I think I don't know what I'd ask him. Just like how his creative process, how he makes the music he does, it's insane. How if you really listen to gorillas albums, how many pieces there are to them, and he mixes so many genres. And uh, he is like one of my number one inspirations too. I I'm just really impressed with his work and. He would be someone I'd love to talk to you about that stuff. Super cool guy. Sweet. Me, uh, well, he passed away a couple of years ago, but uh, Gustavo Cerati from Soda Stereo. Um, God, he, like, he, he's my favorite like uh, musician and guitar player. So what I would ask him was like lessons <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, and, 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 and how he comes up with lyrics too, because like his lyrics are like my favorite. Uh, him and then uh, Enrique Bumburi too, too because um, he's also one of my favorite lyricists too so uh, just like you know advice on writing uh, composing pretty much composing songs and stuff so mm -hmm. those are the, the two my two big guys can't really think of anyone right now to be honest because uh, there are a lot of artists out there but uh, maybe Chicano Batman you know asked him like like how does it feel to be a band that's like in an under underrepresented like country you know like how does it feel or like um something like that you know along the lines of like both political and like mm -hmm. like something like that because i remember um like thinking you know we're all mexicans and like who who the hell is going to listen to us like like we have low money and like the scenery is not that good here <laughs> but we make w what the best of what we have you know absolutely so, Something like that. Yeah, I guess for me it'd be um Steve Ray Vaughn. <laughs> Obviously he's dead, but uh yeah, he's my favorite musician overall. And uh there's one thing that's attracted my music is to his music, it's uh you get that feel from his music. And I would really want to know like how you can get the crowd to get that feel with you. If I could ask him that, it's like how you can get a crowd involvement when it's all slow and quiet, but yeah, everyone's still hundred percent invested in you. pretty good question um i probably go back to my roots um and probably ask any artist that was probably like in the genre of like uh spanish oldies romanticas so it could be laudan jose luis perales uh, jose jose you know just those old old timers you know that they really spoke from the heart and then you could also see them through their um expressions and live performances um, yeah. their expressions that they, they use with their hands um, you could really tell that their their lyrics and their music came from directly from the heart and i would ask them how they found that inspiration and you know like how would they find that inspiration during these times you know because times change all the time and time 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 <laughs> but you know somebody uh another person that i would actually want to ask a question or various questions would be um the lead singer for maldita vecindad uh what would i ask him damn how his energy on his live performances um i really admire the way that he expresses himself as well um so would i <laughs> i don't know what i would ask him i would ask him a lot of questions but um damn inspiration basically or just how is he doing how how how's his life doing so far you know is he doing good <laughs> huh? like, yeah, for real. you want you want a friend you want to have some coffee i don't mm -hmm. know you know how are all you doing by the way <laughs> pretty good yeah, we're good everyone's healthy as far as i know yeah we still jam every once in a while when we can so pretty good Good, good to hear. And thanks for sharing, all of you. The next fun question is name one of your favorite albums. Name your top favorite album. Top favorite album. Oh, God. <laughs> ever? Like, ever or right now? Uh, oh, you, whichever answer has more of a story that goes with it. Um, let's see. Uh, it's actually a compilation album because uh, like for example, like I said, Solo Stereo, probably my my favorite band of all time. Mm -hmm. 
before I uh, heard of him, I, I heard like a, a song or two uh, on the radio. And uh, I was like, oh, what, what, what's this band? And, and I found it uh, at the, back when they used to sell CDs because I'm old. <laughs> so I remember what I, oh. I would go to the stores and buy CDs. Yeah. Um, I found the, like the, the aisle section where they had the, the Soda Stereo. But I just went straight for the, the, their compilation because I wasn't sure, like, uh, you know, what, what album to do. So I just got that one. As, I heard, as, as soon as I heard that one, I, I got all of them. All the all their uh, their albums because all the first ones from Soda. yeah pretty pretty much so after that uh, then I you know but pretty much <laughs> that, that compilation album is the one that pretty much shaped my you know sort of like my musical uh, landscape you could say as far as guitar playing too um maybe I would say I don't know my favorite album uh. Maybe Presence from Led Zeppelin is one of my favorite albums, and that kind of inspired me to play the drums in the style I do. You know, I, I think Neil Peart uh, from Rush, who unfortunately passed away this year, inspired me to actually pick up the like, sticks and start playing. But that album kind of, I always liked the way John Bonham played. I never knew I could play like Neil Peart. So I think that album has my favorite Zeppelin song. So I like that album a lot. You want to go? Yeah, I guess for me it's gonna be it's gonna have to be like a uh, Iron Maiden Power Slave. It was uh, I got introduced to it as a little kid, very little kid, and that definitely shaped the way how I played bass and write any of my music. So yeah, I honestly that if it wasn't for Iron Maiden, I probably would never picked up the bass or any of that stuff. Um, one album that really inspired me. Uh, it's from Mana called Revolución de Amor. Mm -hmm. uh, it's another Spanish band, uh, but they're good. Yeah, they're pretty good. Um, you know, it talks about um, people's rights, you know, freedom, all that sorts of stuff, and corruption and death, poverty going on around the world. So um, some of those songs, you know, sometimes I go back to them, and it really uh, it does play like a huge role, like. Or it makes sense of what's really happening like during these times and things I find inspiration or I get really emotional here and there. Um, it was one, it, it was an album that my dad picked up in the CD and as a child, you know, we just listened to that album every Saturday, washing dishes, vacuuming, you know, <laughs> getting, getting the, the webs from, from the corners, you know, that sort of stuff. And it, it, it's pretty nostalgic feeling. Yeah. Um, probably for me is a Metallica's Kill 'Em All. Nice. I remember I had to walk it from my friend's house all the way to my house, and it was like an hour walk. And I'd just like play that album, and I'd be like, "Damn, every song in this like album is so sick." And I remember going back home and like learning like every song. To this day, like if I were to hear the track, I'm like, "Oh, I could play it. I could play it. I could play it." And like it really helped shape the way I play and. Uh, you know, I like that have fast, heavy shit. Now I want to know if you had, if you could do a music video, who would you have direct it with you, and which song would you pick from from your songs to do a music video? <laughs> Actually, because uh, I like uh, Depeche Mode a lot. <laughs> uh, their music videos from like the eighties. There's there there's one guy that they went with. I forget his name, but he did like. Uh, like three or four videos of them, like uh, for their album, uh, Music for the Masses. So if you look them up, like for example, uh, Strange Love, like uh, which is like black and white, but um, it, it's really it's pretty cool. So I, I forget his name, but but it would be that guy for me. I always wanted, to, I always liked the idea of doing like a, a an animated or like a drawn music video of just like all this repetitive stuff. There's a mm -hmm. lot of cool ones that I've seen out there. Uh, but uh, obviously it costs like a lot of money you need to hire professionals for that it'd be cool if some artists could do that for us but that that would be the optimal album i mean a uh, music video but I, what song would you think we'd choose we'd either west song. kill yeah west kill or chupacabra that'd be a fun one to do yeah. what would you make it look like just like kind of initial idea definitely a spaghetti western style music video if it was animated though hand drawn i would like to have you seen uh, the game cuphead I want it to look like that. That'd be sick. I've not seen it, but 
when it's like a 20s cartoon style like the old mickey mouse you know looney Tunes. oh for sure movie. okay yeah like that that'd be sick that would be sick no, I, yeah i agree with peralta on the animated yeah. stuff uh growing up too i listened to a lot of gorillas and they have like a whole pretty much their whole music videos are all all of them are animated and you get some pretty creative stuff coming out of that stuff. I was like Daft Punk's um, their Interstellar album. It's a whole movie based off of just a cartoon too. So that's really cool. Yeah, I know there's this band uh, called Crumb. Uh, you should look them up. They make some yeah. pretty dope ass like psychedelic like videos. Like they'll use like orbs or like mirrors or shit like that. And then uh, there's also this other band called the, um, I think it's called like Senor Kino or something like that. They're like some band from Sinaloa and like they're like a bunch of like 20 year old kids and like uh, their music videos are very nostalgic and like I like their style, you know, it's like, I don't know, I don't know what the style would be, but it's cool. You should check them out, though. You'll know what I'm talking about if you look okay. those two up. I'm going to rewatch this interview so many times and just try to look at everybody. <laughs> 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 I'll have like a whole, like so many new playlists just from this interview.